All right, it looks like we're ready to go. Um, we're we're going to, um, we'll welcome to the stream if, if some people that have already joined us. Um, we're going to kind of hold off just for a couple minutes and let people join us as, as sort of a way of getting started here before we get into the, the program proper. Um, but um, while, we're, while we're kind of letting that happen, um, you know, by the way, if you're watching this after the fact, you're watching the recording, feel free to just skip ahead about, you know, two or three, three, four minutes, um, and that'll get you into the, the, the program. Um, yeah. I guess while we're waiting, um, let's see here. So, um, hey, I'm Ben Clark. I'm the archivist here. Um, I'm going to be kind of moderating this for, for Gary today. Um, again, thanks for, for joining us. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm just going to um, go through some, some business. Uh, usually this is the point of the presentation, the live, if we're doing this live, I would be asking you to please hold your questions to the end um, and to, to turn off your cell phones and things like that. Uh, don't need to do that, of course. Um, at this point, you can, you can you might be watching this on a cell phone. Uh, feel free to keep those on. And, and if you have any questions, I encourage you, please do feel free to put those in the chat or the comment section. Um, I will be kind of monitoring that and then we'll have some time at the end for Gary to do a, a question and answer about the topic. So um, please do that. Um, we are um, very thankful to be sponsored um, for these, these events by Yankee Bookstore and Compass Properties. Um, they make it possible for us to, to put these programs, to, to bring in some people occasionally and to, to you know, do all of that. Um, so again, big thanks to them and to all of our members of the Historical Society here and, and donors and all of the people who make it possible for us to um, be able to put this stuff on and, and to, to bring you stories like the history of the mall um, and downtown shopping in general and all of that sort of stuff. So um, yeah. Um, I think I'm going to save the, the upcoming events until afterwards. We'll have a little bit of time while, while we, you know, gather questions. Um, but um, we can go back here. Let's see how we're doing. <clears throat> yeah, so again, we're, we're just getting started, but, um, you know, just give people a couple minutes to, to, to join us. Uh, it's a little different. We can't have open the house and let people come in. So we're just going to do it this way. Um, but thank you for joining us. And yeah. Sound seems to be okay. And feel free to, to let us, let me know if the sound or anything is bad. We're going to do our best. Uh, we're you know, still still figuring this stuff out as we go, but I think this we 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 should have it kind of smoothly down for you this morning uh, or afternoon as it is. Yeah. Do, do. All right. Cool. Well, I think I think with this, um, you know, it's it's two o'clock. There'll be a little bit of a delay getting to you, but um, yeah, let's let's get started here. Uh, welcome um, once again to the uh, you know if you were here a little bit earlier um, to the history chats. This is the first history er, history speaks. This is the first history speaks um, that we've done in 2021. Um, so we're excited to tell tell you about the story of of shopping downtown Wassa and the surrounding area. Um, yeah, let me. Again, if you if you have any questions at any point, feel free to put them in the comments or the chat section. Um, we'll have some time for that later. Uh, but right now, I'm going to invite Gary to um, join the call. Gary Gisselman is the librarian and a historian here at the Marathon County Historical Society, and he is going to be our presenter this afternoon. So thank you, Ben. Thank you for the introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, so what we're do, going to be doing today is looking a little bit at what downtown Wausau was like in the beginning days of, of, of Wausau and the downtown. We, um, the era, an era of downtown Wausau is certainly beginning to change with the, with the change uh, of function of the Wausau Center Mall. So there have been many changes through the years uh, to the shopping experience in the city. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk a little bit about what caused it, what, what the changes were, and what brought people downtown to shop. Evidently, there's more to downtown Wausau than shopping. Uh, but shopping was a big part of it. And we will 
um, certainly talk about that. It was a big part in the early days. Uh, we're not going back this far, but rural people would be coming to downtown Wassa to shop at a small mercantile shop. But then through the years, uh, downtown Wassa grew up and the shopping experience started to also grow up. Uh, people started to come in more and more. And we, we start to see that a lot of people are downtown at a variety of stores in downtown Wassa. Um, so this is a, a, um, a crowd gathering in front of the fair store on Third Street. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later, but it just goes to show that the, uh, downtown Wausau was a big part of shopping and vice versa. Here we have, and in case, I don't think I know this store. So if there's anyone out there that seems to have a sense of what store this was, um, uh, you can see shop, most likely this was at Christmas time. The stores are full of shoppers coming into the city, into this downtown to see what it's like. Uh, the Third Street, Third and Scott, very heavy with shoppers. Um, who knows where they're all going? We'll talk a little bit about that, store, that department store in a few minutes. But um, at the end of the shopping experience, there would always be a counter. There would always be a lunch counter. There would always be a restaurant. There would always be some place for people to gather, have a cup of coffee, maybe a donut, or or something that would would experience their shopping that would uh, highlight their shopping experience in downtown Wassa. So uh, I think this is in Kresge's uh, way back when. Uh, I think they had counters like this. So uh, this was all part of the shop. What I would consider part of the shopping experience in, in Wassa. Uh, and it continues, of course, to this day. But this is perhaps the ultimate shopping experience was like when people, uh, most likely on some kind of a uh, fall market day, uh, filled the city, uh, filled Third Street with, uh, with shoppers galore. And uh, this is really a classic um, bargain day. Evidently somebody had some shoes um, in the middle of Third Street, um, so we were all. It was a big deal, and we'll and we'll and the what we're trying to do today is show you why, and what some of those stores and some of those experiences were like. But first of all, I want to show you two maps. This is a map of Wasa with the blue line coming up from the south of Grand Avenue. And remember that at one time, Grand Avenue was business, was Highway 51 coming into downtown Wassa. So we had that traffic, that Highway 51 traffic all going to the north coming into downtown Wassa. So things changed when the red line now indicates the, the bypass around Wassa. So we no longer have Highway 51 coming into directly into Wassa, but we have it on the outskirts. And that of course changed the, the temper and the experience of downtown Wassa, the shopping experience, but, it's, but the shopping experience is still a story. So we'll, we'll try to take care of that a little bit this afternoon. And we're gonna start with the big boys, the department stores. The department stores were those stores that had, er that had everything. Um, this is the corner of uh, Washington and Third Street. Uh, the old Livingston's department store, then of course it came, became a Winkleman's department store. Um, so again, this was perhaps the, the Cadillac of department stores in, in this city. Winkleman's was um, had an elevator, very, very nice, uh, materials, nice goods, um, a very nice department store in this city. Uh, again, another shot down, down Third Street, um, three stories of, uh, of merchandise for the shoppers in downtown Wassa. Eventually that building started to change a little bit. And eventually after Winkleman's uh, moved out of that, Johnson Hills came into that building 
and created their presence on this corner um, for quite a while. Uh, we'll talk about the end of that uh, in a few minutes. The other large department store in the city, perhaps in league with, with the Winkelmans was the H.C. Prangy Company. They would be on the 700 block of Third Street. They would be coming into the 700 block of Third Street across what we now know as the YMCA. The building is still here. Of course, through the years, it has changed many functions. Uh, Prangy's eventually would move into the Wassa Center Mall. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But again, a large department store on Third Street, uh, certainly a, a department store with destination, with people destined to come here uh, and shop. Many people remember their Christmas windows, uh, a large presence uh, in, in the city uh, downtown Wassa. Another department store in the in the 200 block of the city of Wausau was Herbergers. Um, they came, if you remember that, that fair store slide a little bit ago, uh, Herbergers came into that building uh, as the department store, uh, a basement and the first floor, I believe they had a lunch counter in the basement also. So again, another, as you can see by the crowd gathering, uh, people were starting to uh, get ready for some kind of a, a shopping experience here, most likely a bargain day of some sort, people lining up at Herberger's on Third Street. The other large uh, player as a department store in the city was the J.C. Penney Company. They started out on Scott Street. Uh, you may recognize the building as we show this. Uh, uh, they, they, I'm sorry, they are on Scott Street, uh, the 400 block of Scott Street. Uh, currently, Shepherd and Schellers are currently. Um, so they started out here on Scott Street. Eventually they would uh, move across the street and to the corner of Third and Scott uh, and to be a part of a larger project on the 400 block. Uh, we'll talk, uh, but J.C. Penney, of course, a large presence in the city uh, for a long time from that Scott Street store to the store here on the corner of Third and Scott, and then eventually into uh, the Wassa Center Mall. I want to talk a little bit about what Main Street uh, or Third Street, I call it Main Street, is Wassa's Main Street, and some of the features, some of the stores that had a, a, a presence here in, in Wassa that would be attracting people, attracting those shoppers. So again, we see uh, typical Third Street, H.C. Prangy on your right, and then we uh, the stores as we go down Third Street. Um, again, uh, Third Street was the main shopping street in the city, um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, this is on uh, for reference. This is on the corner of Third and Scott, looking a little south um, northeast. Um, but, uh, and then of course the 400 block, here we have Kresge's uh, and the story of this 400 block was of course, this was uh, uh, new, these were new stores. Um, originally the uh, courthouse square, then in the 1950s, the courthouse moved to its current location. They tore down the old courthouse and thus established these uh, these stores later on, J.C. Penney, Kinney's Three Sisters, and the Kresge's uh, Five, what, what back then was called the Old Five and Dime. Uh, but again, uh, so this, these stores were as a result of some development, uh, again, creating these four stores, more shopping experiences for the people, evidently, and again, another bargain day uh, downtown when people would be bringing their goods out to out to Third Street. Along Third Street, we I want to move into just a variety of different shopping experiences. Uh, Mill J's. This is I think uh, now called the Bridal Boutique. Um, bridal Bridal gowns opportunities here. Uh, uh, that. Let me just back up again. This was on the corner of McClellan and Third Street. 
this building burnt and it's now a, a restaurant. Um, uh, so again, a, div, um, a another place where people would be having a shopping experience looking for bridal, uh, bridal gowns. On Third Street uh, in the 500 block was Walgreens uh, drugstore. Um, they uh, were here for quite a long time. Uh, eventually they would uh, move into the Wasa Center Mall. And after their mall experience, they would move to uh, Bridge Street, uh, uh, Central Bridge Street on the west side of Wasa. And uh, in, in, in line with the Kresge's uh, store was their competitor, a kidney corner from them was Wolvers. Uh, this would be in the uh, 300 block of, of the city um, where the plate in is now. Uh, we'll show a picture of a Campbell Hines department store in a few minutes. Uh, but this, uh, this store went away to re be replaced by another kind of development. Uh, another drugstore, uh, just, uh, just a quick glimpse of um, the 300 block across the street uh, from the Wolvers was the Alsco Drugs, Seaford's French Slipper Shop, a variety of other smaller stores, smaller retail stores uh, on, that, on that 300 block of Third Street. Uh, sort of coming back uh, again to the 400 block, uh, uh, quite typical, I think, of this of our city and the shopping part places where one could shop. We have Symes Brothers, uh, their menswear store, and Rexall Drugstore. Uh, and then, if you see the uh, the men's sign on on your right, you can see that the mint uh, was right there. And of course, they've been there for for many, many years, uh, gracing um, the Mint Cafe on Third Street, uh, continuing to this very present day. I, I don't show the uh, this building as a shopping experience, but I want to show this when this building was built. It, it, took, um, it took some shopping, um, shopping places away. Um, we, there was a bank building, there, but there was also smaller stores, smaller retail establishments uh, on this 500 block of Third Street. Jim Krishak Jewelers, Yankee Bookstore, uh, Gus Pharmacy, and a variety of other stores uh, down, the, down the line that really um, was a part of a part of what we what downtown was really like, and and with this picture, just take a look at some of the architecture. Uh, look up, you know, the uh, in addition to the, of course the first floor, but the the second floors of Third Street really do represent unique and styles of architecture. That when that bank building came in, a lot of those a lot of this blocks unique architecture features went away. Um, thank goodness we have still kept some of those um, still as part of us, but um, you know, just so that you, you can see what our history was like on this part of the 500 block of Third Street. Uh, moving down again, another unusual architecture feature still here with us in the 300 block of Third Street is uh, this uh, little half tower coming off of, uh, I'm not sure what these retail st store above um, that, that this sits above, but thank goodness there were some uh, that we've been able to keep the, um, the, we've been able to keep the, some of these architectural features still with us uh, to this day. And again, when you're speaking of Third Street, the 600 block, uh, a unique treasure of architectural styles. Um, and of course, this block still does feature a variety of different, um, different stores that still speak to our, the shopping experience in the city. At this point in time, there was electric store, uh, burger gifts, and a variety of other things. But through the hundreds of years that 
this that these buildings were with us, we have seen a lot of different retail entertainment places. Uh, this is this block is really a treasure in downtown Wassa. Um, take a look at it sometime and look up and see the variety of different architectural styles and features that this block does present uh, to the city and to and to must say an added benefit of the shopping experience. But it wasn't just on Third Street. Uh, Scott Street again did have its shopping experiences and places for for people to come and shop. Uh, paint stores, uh, a small Shepherd and Schaller there at that time. Um, a, a larger Shepherd and Schaller in a earlier manifestation of their store uh, in Inner Sleeve. Now the Inner Sleeve, of course, has moved down the street. If you're familiar with Inner Sleeve, they've been a large presence of the city for a long time. Uh, records, uh, a great music spot uh, throughout the years. But again, uh, an another place that drew people into downtown Wausau for, for the shopping experience. On the other, uh, down, down Scott Street, on the, this would be the 100 block, uh, a variety of paint stores, a Vogue dress shop, Zimmer's paints. Um, and then again, uh, you can, if some people remember the old Scott Street Steak and Pub, but of course these buildings were all torn down to make way for, for a parking lot. Uh, and that, and that, uh, so those buildings uh, were all raised for the current parking lot adjacent to the McClellan Street uh, parking ramp. I just want to venture outside of downtown Wassa a little bit, just to know that there were other experiences, other places for people to shop. For instance, this nickel hardware store on Washington Street on Clark's Island. Um, the, the shopping experience really of downtown Wassa incorporated the uh, places like Nickel Hardware, uh, places up on 6th Street, uh, also extending to the west side a little bit. I don't have a, a clear picture uh, with me of the Palace Clothiers, but so the shopping experience of downtown Wassa really did go to the west side and to places like Nickel Hardware here on Clark's Island uh, at the foot of Washington Street. So, but just briefly, I wanna talk uh, a little bit about downtown Wassa because it wasn't, downtown Wassa was more than shopping, but I just, so those features of the, of the uh, bowling alley on, on Jackson Street, for instance, this is the uh, downtown bowling alley uh, the insurance companies, Wassa Mutual there on the corner of Jackson and Third Street, Weltman's Furniture a little bit down the street, uh, also in the 100 block of Third Street. So there were a variety of other experiences for you in, in downtown Wassa that um, help serve what you, what you need and what would be bringing you into, into downtown Wassa. Also, uh, this is the Hotel Northern uh, and towards the latter part of its time, it also housed the, um, the Pizza Villa, Angelo's Pizza Villa in the basement, uh, quite a destination unto itself. One of, those, one of those restaurant, one of those eating places that was really a certain draw for a lot of shoppers and a lot of people coming into downtown West. And eventually, and then we're getting to the mall, of course, but it, I get uh, some requests for what was like, la, like, what was life like before the mall? So when the eight square blocks of the mall came into downtown Wassa, that of course changed the whole look of what Wassa was like. So this is looking south, uh, you see the landmark building uh, in front, right to the bottom of the picture and the mall coming um, into those eight square blocks off of Third Street. So as part of that, 
uh, we had a Sears department store on Scott Street, I'm sorry, on Washington Street. Uh, uh, pretty much a, a strong, it was a strong department store. I should have mentioned this as part of the department store story, but Sears was uh, a part of this community for a long time. Uh, their major presence was here on what in the 200 block of, of Washington Street. And then moving up, as you move up the street, you come into Third Street. Um, and another large presence in, in downtown Wausau was the Lee Furniture Store. Uh, a large presence, a large furniture store. Um, not, I'm not sure if it's the largest, but it was really a large presence in downtown Wassa, uh, covering close to a block, good block of the 100 block of Third Street uh, during its day. And smaller stores uh, also graced uh, this area, Trade Home Shoes on Third Street, uh, Lakewood Sporting Goods. Uh, take a look, you know, they were here uh, for a long time. Um, there was also a fraternal group upstairs, a social group that met upstairs. Take a look at the unique architecture of that Lakewood Sporting Goods store. Uh, and also smaller uh, retail stores, uh, an early home of Bueller's Bicycle Shop on Third Street. They were, uh, of course, they moved to the west side um, during, during the, the, the construction of the mall, uh, a small Dalky shoe, shoe repair. So a lot of smaller stores, a lot of smaller um, in, stores that created Again, the shopping experience, something that would bring people into, into downtown Wassa. And of course, uh, the Musical Isle, again, a store, uh, one of the oldest intact uh, stores, unique architectural style, of course, but uh, have, having a lot of history in that building. Uh, Bob's Musical Isle uh, was here for many years. Um, on the corner of Third Street and Washington Street. And of course, on across the street on the corner, uh, on the other corner of Third and Washington was Petron's Jewelers and the paint store. So, you know, in that eight square blocks, there were a lot of different stores, a lot of different companies that did that were providing services. Uh, you can't see it in the back is the Wausau Laundry. Uh, but again, a paint store here on the corner of 2nd Street and 4th Street, uh, almost across the street from what we now know as the Wausau Post Office. Uh, but again, a great uh, a shopping experience uh, in downtown Wausau for your paint, for your paint supplies. And I show that I show this as sort of the a picture, the shoppers here um, at Red's Farmer's Market, one of the early um, farmer's markets. He, um, he brought in his, his uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, he had a little bit of a, a store here, uh, but again, uh, this was in back of the uh, Market Square Tavern on Second Street, again, shopping, uh, a place that would certainly bring people downtown uh, to shop and to, um, to, to find material, to find uh, groceries, to find um, fresh produce at Red's Market. But then things started to change. The mall started to come up. Uh, this is Mayor uh, John Cannonberg. Uh, Unveiling the new uh, the new Wausau Mall, uh, the artist drawing of the proposed Wausau Center Mall, and thus it was starting uh, basically in the late 1970s. The planning started to develop, and uh, and the city moved to um, to create the Wausau Center Mall, and the and that whole story is a story unto itself. We're not going to spend that much. We're not going to spend time really 
in, in that history. That history is a long story unto itself um, over many, over several years, uh, over several years in the planning, uh, in the planning of it, in a variety of competitions from um, other retail places on the northwest side of the city, uh, the city trying to come to bear in exactly what we should be doing with regards to downtown Wasa, to what we should be doing with regard to the shopping experience in the city. And city fathers, redevelopment authorities, uh, city councils, and a variety of other folks came together and worked very hard to create um, this, this Wasa Mall. And I know this is a cluttered picture, and, uh, but if the post office is down towards the, the bottom of the picture, uh, that main street uh, is uh, Forest Street, you're looking north, you can see uh, Johnson Hills, you can see some uh, on your left, some parking lots, uh, which would be the Western part of the proposed mall, uh, as well as what were some of the other features and buildings of this eight square blocks of the city. And then eventually things started to change. So uh, this would be uh, an aerial view of the new Sears coming in on, on uh, Washington and Fifth Street. And the unusual story is that with this, the Sears people said that they're not going to be able to tear the old Sears down until they have built the new Sears. So the first project for the construction of the Wasa Center Mall was building the new Sears and the adjoining uh, parking ramp. And then, and then once that was built, once that started to have customers, then the old Sears was torn down and the rest of the construction of the Wasa Center Mall started. So, you know, so that's the, the, the raising of uh, those square, eight square blocks of the city. Um, I think, I'm not quite sure, this might be on, on Third Street. I think this is Third Street. Um, I think the 200 block of Third Street. Uh, as well as uh, this is a little bit of a different view. Uh, looking north, the least department store is still there, and that and that 200 block of of, of Third Street uh, is being raised to so get ready for uh, the Wasa Center Mall. And of course, the other buildings within within that area. This is that picture of the Hotel Northern and uh, Angelo's Pizza. Uh, again, had to come under the um, the wrecking ball, so to speak, and create space for the Wasa Center Mall. And eventually, uh, the the land was cleared, and the mall was starting to be built. And thus cometh the um, the Wasa Center Mall. And here we have that that building, that eight square blocks of the downtown, and the rest of the uh, and thus in 1884, nine, correct myself, in 1984, the, the doors were open and the, the shops uh, and the mall was thus ready for, um, its, for its shoppers. So, so we have the new, the new JC Penney's, the new Prangies. So they, Prangies the department store moved from the other end of Third Street and we have the new Sears uh, and the parking structures and the sh and all, of course all of them all shops in the in the new Wasa Center Mall. Uh, this is the, the the Sears. This is a picture of that Sears building when it pretty much stood alone uh, as the new rest of the mall was being constructed. And I show this uh, in. In, in the construction of the Wasa Center Mall, there was the architects, I think, were really trying to provide a glimpse into Wasa's architectural as well as Wasa's historic uh, epoch, really. Uh, and this is a depiction by the architects of the, of the pine forest. 
that was uh, that really it was that grew up with uh, and 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 fed upon for for many years uh, depiction and I'm not sure if that is still uh, attached to the mall or not but it was certainly a unique part of the of the mall an indicator of the architects really trying to bring certain elements that was the certain elements of the city into into the Wasa Center Mall. And thus we have the, the mall under construction. Uh, eventually here is the Wasa Center Mall ready for um, ready for the shoppers, ready for people to come in and use those department stores, Sears, Prangies, Pennies, as well as the other smaller shops that were a part of of the Wasa Center Mall. And, he, and of course, the Wasa Center Mall continued to dominate Third Street, shot down Third Street, uh, continued to dominate Third Street as we, as we, as we see it through many years since, since 1984 to the present day. And with the change in, in ownership, uh, as we see today, we'll see it now under a new um, new ownership and the future of how that eight score blocks is going to be changing, we don't know yet. That's a, that will be a new story. That will be a new story that we get to tell someday. But the, the end of the, I, but so-called the end of this part of the history of that eight score blocks is now coming to an end coming to an end and the creation of the new history, uh, we will see that uh, eventually. But just so that you recall the, those blocks before the, the Wasa Center Mall also had a lot of Wasa history into it. And we also, and our charge uh, is, to, is to reflect on that history and what those eight square blocks were a part of uh, before the Wasa Center Mall uh, came into existence in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And when the mall did come, of course, there was great excitement, you know, so there was great excitement at the, the inaugural uh, days when, when Wasa would throw open the doors to the mall, great excitement, great, great festivities, uh, parades galore, uh, the city of Wasa knew that this was a big day for the city and they really um, went overboard. Well, maybe not overboard, but they really did uh, make it a point that they really wanted to highlight what this, what the Wasa Center Mall uh, did for the city. And if you look over the history of the Wasa Center Mall, you have to really give it uh, high marks for its presence in in downtown Wassa. It sort of has its own history, its own influence, its, its own part of, of what the downtown experience was like. Uh, that is now over, like I say, but a new experience will I'm sure come into, come into being as part of this. But we can't, we can't forget the, the shopping experience today. So, even though the Wasa Center Mall is changing functions, uh, we still have our third, we still have the shopping experience in downtown Wasa. We still have places that provide sporting goods. Um, Shepherd and Schaller has been on, on that block as you saw through the years for, for many, many years. Um, and their presence of course has changed their, their, their Facade has changed through the years, but that building has not changed. It's a unique architectural splendor in the city. Uh, just take a look on the second floor, the unique architectural features of that building. And there are others, other mainstays in this, in downtown Wasa Yankee Bookstore. If you recall, they were across the street in the, in the, in the, uh, in the block that was uh, torn down to make way for the the future bank building. So again, they've been here in downtown for over a hundred years. Also, a shopping experience 
uh, on Third Street in Wasson. And the, um, the presence of a place like the Palladium or um, Campbell Haynes Men's Store or the rest of the shops on Third Street, uh, Washington, you know, um, all a part of now the new, the new shopping experience. And this ch keeps changing. Uh, this building is fairly new in downtown Wasa. The, the buildings, the shopping experience continues to change um, throughout the years. Uh, and, and we now feature places like downtown grocery, um, as well as the brush. You know, so I, I don't mean to pick on, on, a variety, on these, but I just want to emphasize the fact that the shopping experience that we knew on Third Street for many years, before the mall, after the mall, um, we now have the, the shopping experience still going on uh, in downtown Wassa. Uh, evolutions and design uh, and, of, and, um, and Washington Square itself. Uh, this is, uh, as you recall, this is the old uh, Winkleman department store, uh, the Johnson Hills department store, and then eventually it was moved into uh, by the Washington Square people with a variety of different shops, uh, restaurants, coffee houses, a variety of other things that that provide the shopping experience in in downtown Wassa. So through the years, down Third Street and the side streets of of the city have provided a a variety of shopping experiences, uh, as many as really as you want. Um, but through the years, it has changed. The 400 block, the courthouse got torn down. Then, then uh, the, some retail came into it. Then that retail got torn down and creating the 400 block. Um, the 500 block of Third Street, the bank building came in, raised, but Throughout all that, uh, the shopping experience is still here in downtown Wassa, and we're still trying uh, to, sell, to tell the story of that history uh, because it is a unique history uh, that still needs to be told. Uh, and that's why uh, I hope you enjoyed this program. This concludes the, um, the end. I sort of begin the story with with the old Winkleman's department store. And I ended here with Washington Square as a, as a building that has really been through the years, um, a shopping mecca uh, and an anchor for downtown Wassa for, for many years. So with that, I turn it back to Ben. And I hope you, if you have questions, comments, please leave, Ben will be open to that. So with that, I turn it back to to Ben and um, we'll wait for comments or questions if you have any. And I hope you enjoyed a, a little bit of what shopping was like in downtown Wasa, the variety of things, the variety of stores, but um, a great history uh, unto itself. Thank you, thank you, Ben. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, Gary, that was, that was great. Um, as Gary said, if you have any last minute questions, I'm gonna, I got, I got a couple here from, uh, from what people have been talking about, but uh, I'm just gonna take this opportunity to tell you about what's coming up here. Uh, if you enjoyed this, you might enjoy um, the, the, the um, let's see here. So next month, um, our, our second History uh, Speaks of the Year is gonna be um, we, uh, the Wasaf Winter Frolics, uh, which was a big celebration um, uh, here of, of winter sports. If you've been uh, paying attention to our history chats over the last um, couple couple uh, weeks, uh, we've been touching on this a little bit, the winter sports, uh, but now we're going to kind of dive in and look at this from the early um, it, it, creation of like basically sports tourism and things like that through the, the revivals over the years. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, that'll be um, again, Saturday, Saturday at two o'clock um, on February 27th. Um, and speaking of history chats, um, we are now finished with our uh, winter sports, but next uh, Thursday, we're going to, we, every Thursday we have uh, history chats, which is sort of a uh, shorter form history speaks. We just kind of speak for about 15, 20 minutes about something interesting every week. 
Um, and we're going to be jumping into more people you should know. Um, so these are people that you might have heard the name um, or, or be somewhat familiar with them, or maybe you haven't at all, but they're, they're stories that are, have something interesting behind it and that we think you should know about. So uh, Gary will be back to talk about uh, the Anderson Brothers and Johnson, um, the pioneers of the Red Ruby Granite, um, this coming Thursday. Um, and then uh, we have a couple more lined up as well for the rest of the month, which should be a lot of um, some, some great stories to be told there too. Um, so yeah, and, and I should mention if you're, if you're unable to join us for any of that, or you just want to take a look at past programs, we have all of that on our YouTube, um, or, or Facebook, you can kind of go back and look at the, the videos and, uh, we have all those up as well. So there's a lot of content. There's a lot of great stories that we've been telling and, and plan to tell in the future. So with that, let me, let me take a look. Um, let's see here. So I guess one of one of the things that that uh, maybe maybe could could mention um, there's some you know there's a bunch of people who who as as you kind of went through remembered oh I you know remember this or that store um, or or specifically called out some stores um, but there's there's one comment uh, well a little bit of a discussion here about there being a lot less specialty stores a lot less you know options I guess down in downtown. Um, I guess do you want to do you want to speak about about that about the um oh well, I guess you you kind of covered it towards the end there right um but uh yeah I guess that's 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 one 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 thing go on. just uh, I think the Wassa Center Mall you know with the smaller shops I think that that created I think you're going you I think your drift was towards those specialty shops the shoe stores the uh, small clothing stores, the, um, you know, a variety of other, the small retail gift stores and that type of thing. You see that uh, uh, movement into the, into the Wasa Center Mall. And I think that that grabbed some of that, um, that specialty store uh, flavor into the Wasa Center Mall at that time. I think that, so if you're seeing that disappears for for instance, in downtown Wasa, I think you're seeing that at that time moving into the into the Wasa Center Mall. Yeah, and well, I think some play some play. You know, if you take a, a example of Bueller's Bicycle Store, which was there on Third Street, you know, once the mall decided to come in, that small specialty store moved to moved to the west side into bigger facilities. So a variety of different as as stores changed ownership, you know, some moved, some moved into the mall, perhaps some just decided to, to go out of business. And, and, and you, you have seen that through the years, you know, some merchants just decided that it was time to retire and other merchants would move into those same, into those same spots. So the continual movement a variety of different stores uh, throughout the years. Yeah. Um, so one one question could you know obviously we're talking about downtown Wasa specifically, um, and I know with the coming of the mall it became sort of a an attraction. People would come from you know other other cities, other states, maybe even to come do shopping here at least for a little while. Um, but I know we are talking about Wasa, um, and I know we. we you know, having had discussions about planning this, about thinking about other communities and what have you, but but that seems to be the case too. That that was you know people came to like you didn't necessarily have these offerings in other places, right? You could speak to that about the attraction of Wassa even before the mall. Well, I think I, I think if you take a look at northern Wisconsin, you know, and consider the uh, you know so our com our competition really to the west was Eau Claire, mm -hmm. so. You know, there was no shopping experience like Wasa uh, for quite a ways out. You know, so if you had to do some major shopping, you and and Stevens Point had its um, sort of a mini <laughs> because it had a department stores and it's had its its Main Street was quite vibrant. Um, uh, and so it had, and then to the north, Merrill. So you did have, you know, the whole North Woods, even to the south, really, 
uh, as part of the feed into WASA for that, for the department stores, for those specialty stores, uh, those bookstores, restaurants, um, that, that um, carried a long way, I think, into, into the North Woods, into, especially to the West and to the East. Yeah. Um, I guess another thing that was, well, let's see, um, who is it that said that? Um, well, Pat, uh, Patrick Pat Peckham asked, uh, some, something asked if he specifically was asking about the, um, the Mayor shoe store owner. Um, but that's, I guess, just kind of extrapolating from that. There's a lot of, you know, obviously you talked a lot about the, the stores and the architecture and sort of what they did. And obviously, I don't want you to start telling us all about all of the owners uh, for all of the stores. Um, but I guess that's another area where uh, sort of the, I mean, obviously there's been a lot of individuals that have been associated, a lot of personalities um, as well that have been part of this. Well, um, well you could. That's a whole, that's a lot yeah. of story, you know. But as long as you bring it up, you know, the Winkleman's department store, um, Cassius Winkleman, his father in, initially started it. So that was in, in the Winkleman family for a long time, father and son. Uh, another family, Mir and I didn't highlight that, but Mirman's furniture on Washington Street. And then if you're talking about the, the Mayor Shoe Store, of course, for a long time, uh, prior to that, the building was a bank building. So, and, and then Mayor Shoes came into the, uh, I forget, Mr. Mayor, uh, George, what, whatever. Uh, so the Mayor family came into, into that building for a shoe store. And then when that, when that era ended, then it, took different lives throughout, you know, since then. So, uh, but you'll see that with a lot of different stores in, in, uh, in downtown Wausau. The, um, the, of course, the Mint has always been the Mint, Shepherd and Schaller, um, you know, two, uh, the, Shep, the, the Shepherds and the, fa the, and the Schallers, two families that started that, you know, so a lot of family stores, of course, the Yankee Bookstore, of course, but a variety of other strong families that had their presence in downtown Wassa. Does that sort of answer that, what Pat was trying to to get at or? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think I think there's a lot of reminiscing. Um, I don't know that there's any specific questions that anybody is really posing specifically. Um, but I think that, that kind of speaks to sort of the general um, I think because I think that is one of the interesting things um, that that you do get is the the sort of locally owned and these family these these people that that you know it's not just that building or going and buying you know shoes you come to know the the people that are associated with it right right and that and that goes a long way because the names the mayor you know the mayor shoe company Yankee Bookstore mm -hmm. the family names Shepherd and Schaller did mean a lot uh, as far as where where you went to shop and how you did your shopping in downtown Wausau, that family name did, of course, uh, mean a lot for, for shoppers as they came into Wausau. Yeah. All right, well, I think, I think that's probably, you know, um, a good, maybe a good place to stop actually. Um, was I, I think, again, there's a lot, of, a lot of reminiscing, which is great. I think a lot of people are very thankful of you bring back some, some fond memories of, of shopping downtown. Um, which I'm sure you know it's it's great, uh, but I think maybe that's a, a good place. Um, unless there's anything anything last last minute what thing you want to say here about well, this? The his, I guess the 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 history is always changing, so you know as we see we as we see the steps in the history of shopping and the history of downtown. Of course, there's always there's always steps. There's always eras, mm -hmm. and now as we see a new era dawning on in the life of downtown Wassa, I think it's good to, like we did today, to step back and see what that, what those eras were like um, in our past history. Yeah, awesome. All right, well, I think, yeah, like I said, I think we're, we're probably called that a, an afternoon. Thank you everybody to, for joining us. Um, it's great, great to see a lot of, lot of interest. Um, a lot of people came out and, and 
I'm sure people will be checking out the video who can't make it live. So um, thank you all for joining us. And um, yeah, we'll, we will uh, see you next time with um, another History Chats uh, or, and, and Speaks in the future. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ben. You.